Hi everyone. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, we're going to get started in just a moment. I'm going to give a bit of time for some other people to join. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen in just a moment. Okay, I would like to say that this meeting is being recorded, so um, if we can keep cameras off and stay muted until questions. So thank you all for joining. My name is May. I'm a peer advisor at the study abroad office, and I studied abroad my freshman year in Temple Rome. Today, we're just going to get some more in-depth information about the Temple Japan campus and our program and what we have to offer there. So today, we're going to talk about why you may want to choose Temple Japan the academics that we offer, the internships we offer, the different housing options, cultural enrichment that the program offers, challenges and support you may face with being abroad and how to deal with that, how to finance studying abroad, and finally, how to apply. So a little program overview. Temple Japan hosts 1,200 degree seeking graduate students. Um, in addition to several other students in non-degree programs, this means that you'll be taking classes with local Japanese students, international students, and other study abroad students. Um, Temple Japan is located to the southwest of Shibuya Station and is very well connected. Shibuya can get you across all around Tokyo, um, Tokyo is also the largest urban area in the world. It has 37 million people in the Tokyo metropolitan area, as well as a massive transportation network. So most shopping centers and many restaurants are found near the train station, so you can easily get around, find things to do. Um, English can be found on signs and in transportation, but it is not widely spoken, so you can definitely get your way around without speaking a lot of Japanese. Um, but it may be harder to communicate um, to people. It's a very international city, so you can find all kinds of different things to do, food, and places to go. Um, some of the highlights of the program are an orientation in Tokyo. This includes a welcome party, a grocery store tour, and how to navigate from the dorms to campus. We have a very robust internship program with opportunity for, extra, for an extra $5,000 scholarship if you decide to participate in an internship. And there are also various activities um, planned by the Office of Student Services through the semester. These will allow you to go and explore around Japan. So you can study in the semester, summer, or for a whole academic year. The degree requirements or electives, we have them for um, any department. So Temple Japan is a very good program to go on if you are looking to graduate in four years, um, or if you have some specific requirements that may, may not be um, available within other programs. All the courses are instructed in English, so you do not need to speak Japanese, um, except for, of course, the language courses and some higher level courses. Japanese is also not required to study abroad in Japan. However, we do highly recommend that you take it. There is a Japanese 1001 class um, that has a standard beginner level of language course. This is basics of reading, writing, speaking, um, and this is meant to be continued as the first of many Japanese classes you would take. Otherwise, we also have a practical Japanese class specifically for study abroad students that will just teach you how to navigate the city, some of the most important phrases and language skills. This one is not necessarily designed for you to keep studying Japanese after that semester, but 
it will definitely help you travel around while you're abroad. Um, there are 10 majors. Students in these majors can find higher level courses at TUJ. Um, if you're not in these majors, then TUJ also offers several gen eds in all areas, as well as electives. Um, most students there typically take one or two gen eds, a major course if possible, and a language course. Um, here we go. So we have majors in art, Asian studies, communication, economics, general studies, international affairs, international business studies, Japanese language, political science, and psychological studies. So as you can see, a lot of majors, um, if you are in one of those majors, then there will be higher level courses for you to take and stay on track to graduating, as well as gen ed courses. For internships, um, the academic internship course is a three to four credit course, and it spans a variety of departments, so you will find something that applies to you. Um, the placements can vary from year to year, but we have them in lots of different um, subjects, and many students who do not have an exact fit can also do an internship for an elective credit. The internship requirements are that they are typically 15 to 20 hours, as well as course requirements. Um, Non-credit internships, though, may not be as rigorous, so if you're looking for something um, a little bit less time-consuming, you could take a non-credit internship. Um, three to four weeks after the application deadline passes, the internship application process will begin, and that is where you will receive a full list of the internship sponsors, what the companies are looking for, you can select your top three choices, and the team in Japan will send the resume and cover letters to companies, and they'll let us know if you have been chosen or if they're moving on to the second choice. So for housing, um, there are program arranged dorms with shared common spaces, homestays, which are an individual room in a family home as well. These include meals. Um, these may be less available due to COVID-19 restrictions, and then independent housing may also be slightly less available due to COVID-19, but it is still definitely an option. Um, in the residences, most students will be in single rooms and with a shared kitchen or study spaces. The Musashi Kusugi dorm is a primary dorm with single rooms. And then Hakusan is the secondary dorm, and usually only single rooms unless it's really necessary to put students in doubles. Um, but even the doubles are quite private, so you will still have your own space. Both of the dorms are about 50 minutes away from campus utilizing the subway. But again, um, the dorms are very close to the subway, as well as Tumble Japan, so it really is just um, a subway ride there. Some students also will have friends and family in Tokyo and decide to stay with them or opt into getting an Airbnb with a few of their classmates, and that would be the independent housing. One quick thing about that, sorry, May, um, if I might. Hi, everyone. My name is Christine Weiler, and I'm the assistant director, and I help manage our students who are going to Temple Japan. Um, just something to note with housing is we actually have moved away from using the Hakusan um, dorms. Um, so we'll be primarily using Musashi Kusugi and then um, a dorm called Kamikita. This really isn't necessarily um, something that you need to know in order to choose your housing. Um, it's just those are the names of the dorms that we'll be using. Um, and then whenever if you do apply um, and are accepted into the program, you'll then select like whether you want a single room, double room or a triple room and who your roommates might be. Um, something else to note about homestays, those are no longer facilitated through TUJ. Um, we actually have started working with a third party provider. So it's more along the lines of independent housing as you'll be the one sort of um, taking the initiative on um, applying for a homestay and uh, meeting all of that provider's requirements, um, but we do provide you with the application and things like that. So if you are interested in a homestay, just know it might be a little bit more work. Um, so just wanted to um, add those couple of details there. Thank you so much. So for cultural enrichment, there are student organizations like basketball, cycling, Kali, anime, um, performance and video production. There are also field trips um, with TUJ that will take you all over Japan to places such as Kyoto, Sapporo, Osaka. 
And these can be day trips or overnight stays. There are also Japanese festivals, museums, sporting events, and the Imperial Palace. There's social mixer events at Temple Japan to help facilitate social interaction, as well as language and cultural exchanges between Japanese and international students. Um, through these opportunities, you can make new friends and interact socially while learning about different countries. It's also really cool just to socialize with some people who are um, actually from Japan and get to know a bit more about the culture. Temple Japan also organizes special cultural workshops on traditional Japanese arts. Some of the past ones have introduced students to ikebana, calligraphy, the tea ceremony, the tea ceremony, koto, and archery. And students can work part time on a student visa in Japan for up to 20 hours a week. Um, typically, for students without any Japanese language background, these positions would often be English language tutoring um, or working for the Teaching and Learning Center at TUJ. So here are just some photos with some of those um, student organizations and mixer events. So some challenges to keep in mind with studying abroad are that um, when you go to Japan, it is still a modern city with modern issues. Um, so things like traffic will still be applicable. Um, those are still things that you'll have to deal with. There will also be homogeneity and traditions, um, especially traditions you may not be accustomed to. So you may feel a bit of culture shock. Um, you also have to keep in mind when you're studying abroad that you are still studying. So you are at school. It's important to take advantage of the fact that you are abroad while also making sure that you're on top of your schoolwork and not letting that um, go off the rails. And then you will feel loneliness and homesickness. It's a very new culture, um, especially with the time difference in Japan. It's one of the largest time difference from the US to Japan. So it may be hard to keep in contact with the people back home. Um, but definitely sending texts, um, phone calls in the morning when it's night for them definitely work. And you will also be adjusting to a new life with new foods, friends, customs, surroundings. Um, but keep in mind that a lot of people are experiencing that new culture with you for the first time. So people are feeling the same way as you are. It's definitely good to make friends and you can always talk to them about um, any struggles you're facing when you're abroad. So applying to Japan eligibility, um, you have to be a currently matriculated full-time student. So you cannot be part-time. You have to have completed at least two semesters of college. So your freshman year, typically, um, a cumulative GPA of 2.75 for the semester. And for the summer, you have to have a 2.5, as well as be in good academic and disciplinary standing. Some of the upper level courses at TUJ do have prerequisites. So to be able to take those, you would have taken the prerequisites on main campus. You can apply online at our website, studyabroad.temple.edu. Um, if you go under explore programs and hit Japan, depending on if you want to study for the semester or the summer, you would click on one of those and there will be a red apply now button that will take you to an application. Um, Temple students do need an academic advisor recommendation form and architectures, architecture students have an extra requirement of submitting a portfolio. To apply, the deadlines are April 1st for the fall or academic year, October 1st for spring. For architecture students, it is June 15th. That's only for Temple students and February 15th for the summer. Um, admission is rolling based, so definitely apply early. That will give you your best chance of getting in. Depending on how many people are applying or how early you apply um, can enhance your chances of getting in. And you'll typically hear back from us uh, within two weeks of the application submission. If it is a little bit late, keep in mind that we get a lot of applications and it may just be taking a bit of time to get to yours. So how to finance studying abroad? Temple students pay the temple base rate tuition, which is CLA tuition. That basically means that when you go to TUJ, you will not be paying your school's tuition, but rather the cheapest tuition that Temple has to offer, which is definitely a good thing. Um, we also have cost sheets available online for all terms. Um, these include billable costs and non-billable costs. Just to give you an 
idea, idea of how much you'll be spending when you're studying abroad. Um, all federal and state financial aid that you have on main campus will can be used towards the program um, and definitely consult with student financial services about your aid package before going abroad. Um, they'll be able to answer more of your questions about how you can finance things and how um, to make that financial aid apply to studying abroad. There are also lots of scholarships. Um, our office, the Education Abroad Office, offers scholarships for the semester and summer. There are also outside funding scholarships, um, and we have lots of these on our website. There's the Gilman Scholarship, Foundations for Global Scholars, the Vera Hines Scholarship. This one does have um, a lot of specific requirements, so definitely make sure that it applies to you. And then there are also scholarships on diversityabroad.com, as well as studyabroadfunding.org. And don't forget to do your own research. There are lots of scholarships out there, especially for students who want to study abroad. Um, and the worst thing that happens is you don't get one, but apply to as many as you can or as many as you are able to. Um, and the best case scenario is you get one and it's always free money. So it's definitely a smart decision to apply, even if you're not sure you'll get it. So we can take any questions now and make sure to follow us on social media. We have Instagram, we have blogs, a YouTube channel, and a Facebook. Um, we post lots of updates on our Instagram, so it's definitely a good resource just to keep up to date with what our office is hosting. So if there aren't any questions, you can um, unmute or you can put them in the chat. Andrew, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I was curious, uh, you said the deadline for applying to the summer uh, semester was February 15th. Mm -hmm. um, hold on, let me double check that. Christine, do you know that? Yeah, for summer it is February 15th. Um, we have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I think Jesse has a question too. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a I'm a UART student. Um, so do I just apply the same the same way as Temple students? Um, and and where was where is there like a link or something that I can go to? Um, I I miss that the exact place to to do the application. Yeah, it's on our website, but I can put a link in the chat. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, if you're a non-Temple student, there will be a couple of other things that you'll have to submit, um, but it's pretty much the same application. Cool, cool. And that is for summer 2024, right? Not not this. Um, so I don't know. I don't think we have our summer 2024 applications up just yet. Um, we're currently accepting applications for summer 2023. So this is for this summer? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jesse, are you thinking of going in the summer? I can put both links, but there is a different application. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about going in the summer. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, it looks like we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, as far as when dates for this summer are being released, we're still working with um, TUJ on that. <laughs> um, I know I'm sure that's a little bit anxiety inducing for some of you as you're trying to plan, um, but we're hoping to have those fully solidified within the next week or so. Um, and so if you have been um, accepted or are working on applying, you'll have that information within the next week or two. Um, and then in terms of if there's a meal plan available, um, there isn't a meal plan. Um, students are typically expected to you know, grocery shop um, and cook their own meals. Um, if you're in deciding to be in a homestay, there may be some meals included with that, but that's sort of an on a case by case basis um, as set up with the family. Um, so, um, but yeah, as far as like a meal plan within the dorms or anything, um, that is not something that um, is ex that exists at this point. Yeah, Andrew. Is there uh, somewhere that we, we can get your like your email or something if we have any questions or is it better to just go through um, like the, the, you know, just apply and stuff like that? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, if once you apply, I will put the email address in the chat. You can reach out to this email address, um, and someone will get will get back to you um, with your questions. If you have questions before you apply, um, you can contact our office. But uh, if it's after you've applied, you can go ahead and use this email that's in the chat. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. What are the day-to-day -day transportation requirements? Um, what do you mean by transportation requirements? Like in terms of just getting from housing to the campus, typically students go every day um, and are on campus. Some students do have online courses at TUJ as well. So they take a, you know, sort of like a hybrid <laughs> schedule, um, but um, there are still in-person classes. So you would be expected to be making your way to campus. Um, the um commute time is probably about 45 minutes to 55 minutes um so that's something that you'll want to take into consideration um like may said earlier in the presentation it is a huge city um so it can take a bit of time um to get from one place to another students use um, public transportation though very regularly um and don't have much in the way of issues with it um it's very from you know what i've been told by students and our team there it's very user friendly I will say with my experience in Japan, their subway station like system is super reliable. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Yeah, and you'll get um, a sort of like crash course really upon arrival um, because you'll be responsible for getting yourself from the airport to your dorm um, or your housing uh, or wherever you decide to live. Um, and then you'll be responsible for getting yourself from your housing to campus for orientation and things like that. Um, so you know, you'll you'll figure it out very quickly. We do give you instructions so you're not completely in the dark, um, but that is something that you'll be navigating upon arrival. Um, there is an orientation in the summer as well, yes. Um, in terms of the home state option, I, I do believe that some of the families do speak English. Again, it's not managed through TUJ anymore, so I don't have as much visibility in terms of the types of families that um, the vendor works with. Um, but you'll be filling out an application, and I believe on that application they do ask a question about your Japanese level so that they can pair you appropriately. Yes, if you haven't done so already, I would definitely recommend setting up a time to talk with your advisor about your plans to study abroad and how it sort of will fit into your um, your degree plan, um, whether that's for the summer or the upcoming fall or spring semesters, academic year, um, just talking about what makes most the most sense for you and then start working on your application. I do believe we track attendance. So um, yeah, you should be okay, May. Um, Connor, yes, that email is for Temple and non-Temple students. So um, yeah, once you've you know started your application or submitted your application, you can start using that um, email address for questions.
Any other questions, concerns? Angel? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, okay. I was uh, wondering, um, I know you mentioned internship um, would be available after, I think, that normal application period. Mm -hmm. However, does that also include work study or is that um, interchangeable? Um, that's a good question. I don't believe that um, work study is available at TUJ. Um, so it would be a separate, a separate thing. Good question. I do know that some of the internships, like internship providers we work with, the companies do offer paid internships. Um, not all of them, but some of them do. Um, yeah, the process is different for non-credit internships. Um, it's a lot less intensive. Um, and so typically non-credit internships are established once you've um, arrived as opposed to applying before you go. Um, so it really depends on the type of experience that you're hoping to have um, in the way of, of internships. Because if you're wanting to have something very like structured and official, um, it's a bit more rigorous of a process that you start before you go, um, as we mentioned. And then um, if you're wanting to do a non-credit internship, it's a lot less uh, of a time commitment and um, just, like I said, a lot less rigorous um, than a four-credit internship. Angel, do you have another question? Yes, um, I know it's jumping ahead a little probably, but I'm currently studying, planning to study abroad as a senior. So I was wondering if there are any special programs, scholarships or fellowships that um, Temp UJ offers um, or resources for opportunities post-graduation? Mm, good question. Um, so in, in terms of scholarships and things like that, I'm not sure, I'm not as familiar. In order to study abroad with us though at TUJ, you do have to be a fully matriculated student. So um, that's not to say that you wouldn't, you know, be able to, um, you know, find an opportunity for post-graduation um, while you're at, in Japan, um, but you do have to be fully matriculated and registered as a student in order to participate in this specific program, um, which I know you said you mentioned you're planning to, to study abroad as a senior, so that wouldn't be an issue as long as you haven't already um, graduated. Um, so, or, or you know, grad your graduation date is while you're abroad. That wouldn't work either. Um, but there are a couple of graduate programs also at TUJ. So that's something that you could look into if you're looking at post grad opportunities. I don't know if that answered your question in in full, but <laughs> if you need clarification, let me know. Oh, that um, that helped. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't have any other questions, you're welcome to, to leave. Oh, and Ashwarya, I'm just seeing your second question about internships. Um, typically, yes, we have students um, indicate three like preferences um, in terms of internships. Um, and usually students um, are you know, able to, to secure one of those three. Um, our career services team at UJ does a really great job with coaching students through the interview process and stuff. So typically, um, you know, you're able to get aligned with, with an organization. Welcome.
How are you doing? Good. Hold on, let me stop the recording.